Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you 5 tips and tricks in Adobe Premiere Pro that you might not know. So leave a like on this video, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for daily creative videos, and let's get started. So I've got two things on my timeline, just two example clips to work with, and one of these is actually shot in a bit of a higher frame rate. That means that I can always adjust the speed of it to get a nice slow motion effect, which I have tutorials all about. But let's say we made this clip 50% speed, but it was still a little bit shaky and wobbly, and I kind of wanted to stabilize that. Now, one thing that you probably found if you've ever tried to do this, and you head over to the warp stabilizer effect, is you run into this common issue or error message saying warp stabilizer and speed can't be used on the same clip. So one fix that you might not know about this is you can right click the clip first and nest it into its own sequence. So by right click nesting, you basically create a sub sequence that you can always double click and although this only has one clip in it, you can nest entire combinations of sequences and you should see it turn green. Now we can apply effects on top of this nested sequence that still influence everything within it. So although we have that slow motion clip in the middle, we can still add that warp stabilizer onto this clip and it'll work as normal again. You do still have to be a bit careful, adjust things because sometimes if it tries scaling or warping things too far because you had too much shake in your original clip, nesting it might reveal some black edges. So I have a whole tutorial all about warp stabilizer and slow motion if you search those keywords on my channel. But nesting a clip is very useful and it's also a fix to the other issue of clip dimensions and sequence do not match. So keep that in mind. But now let's move on to our next tip is let's say you want to copy and paste something or you ever want to drag something on the timeline but sometimes you don't get the audio and the video. You can only seem to make one of them appear. Or if you've got something copied and you want to paste it onto your timeline but you want it to be on an empty layer not overwriting your original work, you just can't seem to get it to paste where you want. That's because you need to keep in mind which tracks you have highlighted, whether that's audio, video, and the overall source patching for your inserts and overwrites with these A1 and V1 sections. So if you're not seeing the audio up here, make sure you have the audio A1 highlighted overall, and now you should see the audio gets dragged in as well. And if you don't want to paste things on the first track because that's where you've been building your layers, make sure you have the track 2 or whatever track you want highlighted. Deselect that other one and now when I paste you'll see it pastes on track 2 or whatever's highlighted, track 3 and so on. So that can save you a bit of headache when you don't know why things aren't dragging and pasting where you want them to. Now another quick trick that you might not know about is instead of actually copy and pasting, you can just hold Alt or Option and click and drag clips and selections to make copies and duplications. This is a really quick way to duplicate several things all at once and just move and drag them where you want. Now another trick if you don't know what shortcut that is for Windows or on your computer is you can always head into Premiere Pro and click Keyboard Shortcuts. Here you can see actually every single key and shortcut and what they do and if you hold shift you can see what happens when you hold shift or if you hold alt or option that's the key that I was holding to click and drag and you can actually see everything that happens in all the different ones here and on top of that you can set and customize your own so if you're coming from something like Final Cut and you're still trying to learn Premiere there's actually different preset layouts so there's a Final Cut keyboard layout that maybe mimics more of what Final Cut Pro 7 is like and it'll help you switch over or if you're a user of both and you keep getting mixed up. Now there's also tons of other cool things you can play around with in the preferences and appearance and all that but for the last tip to get into for number five is if you ever are a YouTuber or you need to grab a clean screenshot or JPEG from your video and you don't want to use the max screenshot options or screen capturing your whole screen and editing it somehow, you can actually click this little camera button and whatever moment you're on in the timeline, it will export the, that frame of your footage as a JPEG to whatever path you want it to. So for me, it's headed to my desktop and it'll also import it into the project if you check this box. So I can create a screenshot. You can see it pops up in my media bin as that screenshot 
and it also will pop up on my desktop, which is really useful for when I'm creating thumbnails or when I just need a still frame from the video for a specific edit. You can also do this in the actual source panel. So if you're ever previewing an entire clip that you did not grab a select portion of yet, you can do the same thing on a certain area of the clip. You can click and export that frame and press OK. It'll pop up in your media bin and your desktop. So be careful that stuff can pile up on your desktop. You might want to make a specific folder for still frames and exports and just keep it there. So those are five tips, tricks, and fixes that you might not know about in Premiere Pro. If you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like on it below. Subscribe to my channel if you're not yet to stay tuned for daily new videos. Turn those notifications on. And go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, all that, at Just the No D Show if you want to reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.